Hey guys, so I'm a big fan of Guillermo del Toro's Hellboy films. The world building he did and the acting chops of Pullman, Blair, Jones and the beloved John Hurt make for a magical fantasy dark superhero film. I also have a massive soft spot for Cronin, who I think is the greatest del Toro monster creation to date. So a few years back I stumbled on a post from writer Peter Briggs, who describes his relationship to the Hellboy films and the plan they had to make a spin-off film that would kickstart a BPRD series of movies. BPRD, or the Bureau for Paranormal Research and Defense, is the agency that Hellboy, Abe, Liz, etc. work for, who strive to fight and defeat supernatural enemies. Briggs' experience is a fascinating story of how a good script idea is scrapped. Look at all this fucking... Who's putting all this in the bin? How many portions are you putting in there? is in the bin! Look! Look! What the fuck is this? Strap in as we look at Hellboy Silverlands, the BPRD film series that never happened. In Briggs's words on an online post, he said, Back in 2010, I was working out of an office at Weta workshop in New Zealand, when I got a surprise call from Universal. Internally, Universal were keen to make a Hellboy spin-off based around the character of Prince Nuada from Hellboy 2, and asked if I was interested in writing it. I said I was, although there was the slight problem of Prince Nuada being, ah, uh, um, slightly dead at the end of Hellboy 2. I also pushed a little bit that, if it came off, I'd really like to direct it and make it in New Zealand. Universal were agreeable and said we could discuss that at the appropriate time. I started working on an outline with my Los Angeles-based Panzer 88 co-writer Aaron Mason while still in New Zealand. It was called Hellboy Silverlance, and we solved the Nuada problem. Although we never really discussed it as such, it really was a BPRD movie. The aquatic Abe Sapien was the main character, and Hellboy still featured fairly prominently in it. I suppose you could liken it to a Suicide Squad situation. Batman was in there, but the story wasn't really about him. Aaron and myself turned it in. Universal really wanted to proceed with it, but after further discussions at the studio, it was apparent a Hellboy 3 was still on the cards for the studio, and more of a priority, so Silverlance got backburnered. I figured that was the end of it. Five years later, 2015, I was in Sweden when I got another call from Universal. It was looking like Hellboy 3 wasn't now going to happen, so would Aaron and myself now be interested in further developing a reworked version of Silverlance? Larry Gordon would be involved. Now, just coming out of the online post, for context, there had been an idea to do a third Hellboy in the series. Guillermo del Toro had shown interest in finishing his story, and after dinner with Ron Perlman and Mike Mignola, the outcome was a no from someone in the group. Yeah, fine, release me, just say it. Just fucking say it. Don't you swear at me, you little shit. Don't you ever raise your voice at me. I am your creator. Do you understand? All I do is worry and slave and defend you, and all I get back is that fucking face on your face so full of disdain and resentment and always so annoyed well now you're hellboy three dead and i know you miss her and i know it was an accident and i know you're in pain and i wish i could take that away for you i wish i could shield you from the knowledge that you did what you did but your hellboy three is dead she is gone forever and what a waste <laughs> If it could have maybe brought us together or something. If you could have just said, I'm sorry, or faced up to what happened, maybe then we could do something with this. But you can't take responsibility for anything. So now I can't accept. And I can't forgive. Because... Because... I want a new franchise. Anyway, back to Briggs. Briggs said, the one caveat Universal gave us was that the character of Hellboy himself now couldn't be shown. So with this in mind, Briggs moved forward without the big red hero and instead rejiggled the story to focus on Abe and Nuada. This was the story. The story had a sort of Highlander structure to it. Moving into their new Bureau for Paranormal Research and Defense headquarters in Colorado, Abe is troubled still by his psychic connection with Princess Nuala from Hellboy 2, so researches the history of Nuala and Nuada. We would have seen Nuada's connection to a rival fairy courtier who seeks control of the fairy kingdom and Nuada's hand in marriage, and engineers the machinations that cause Prince Nuada's expulsion. 
We have seen Nuada in different time zones down the centuries, including his first meeting with Mr. Wink in Spain during the Spanish Inquisition. Nuada saves Wink from a troop of soldiers. And Nuada in Nazi Germany in World War II, engineering a pact to keep various supernatural entities unharmed from the conflict. We would have seen Nuada and Cronin fighting in a friendly bout for a bunch of Project Ragnarok goons. Doug Jones would have been playing twin characters of both Abe and a reprise of the Angel of Death, with whom Prince Nuada strikes a bargain. Agent Myers from the first Hellboy film would have returned. The story reached a rousing action climax at the BPRD Colorado headquarters and used Rasputin's summoning gauntlet from the first movie, as we did manage to sneak Hellboy in for a cameo in one scene. If it had been successful, it would have been the first in a series of From the Files of the BPRD projects. The post online finishes with a stake in the heart for the project. With the announcement of the Neil Marshall Hellboy reboot project yesterday, I think it's safe to say Silver Lance is now officially dead. As a fan of Hellboy for 25 years, I'm curious to see how the new Millennium project turns out. Now we all know how the Hellboy reboot turned out, and despite the acting chops of David Harbour, who I think did a pretty good job, especially with the look, the film was an absolute turd of a story and one that had been universally panned. Silver Lance had all of the potential to open up a wealth of BPRD storylines. The BPRD comics are actually one of my faves, and you can throw a rock at any of them, and they would make a good standalone movie, or even, as the world seems to be going, a TV series for a streaming site. The BPRD deal with Nazis, vampires, demon frogs, witches, and even old gods, so dropping Silver Lance was a mistake in my opinion. And if the rumours are true that Mike Mignola was the one who dropped out of Hellboy 3 to reboot the franchise, then Mike is probably kicking himself after the abomination that was Hellboy 2019 and how it sank any chances of a revival.